Hi everyone, it's Monique and I'm back to do another tutorial for Wild Orchid Crafts on behalf of their YouTube design team, The Wild Bunch. Just let me move this sign all the way and we'll get started. So today I wanted to uh, create a chunky charm like this and show you guys how I do this. Well, the first thing I do is I gotta, of course, assemble a bunch of different products that I'm gonna use. So I've already started here, and in this tray, I've set aside um, several beads from my stash. I've got some charms from my stash. I also have some eyelets and a Tim Holtz swivel clasp. I've got some bronze findings, Swarovski crystals, I always like using the crystals, and of course some wire. So I have some 20 gauge and some 22 gauge vintage bronze wire. Then I started going through my Wild Orchid Crafts drawers to see what I could add to this charm. I found this cute double heart charm that I'm going to add to the mix. This wooden butterfly and also the filigree butterfly. There's a variety of different bead caps from Wild Orchid Crafts that I might be using. I pulled out the small cameos and I actually have a little oops, frame charm that will work perfectly with this cameo. So I pulled out some of the gold crystal sprays. I thought what I'd do is take some of these crystals off and use them as charms. And I've also got a variety of different small rosebuds and flowers. And you'll see I'm going to do something special to those so that they're nice and durable for on this charm. So now that i got all the products together, we got to think about tools. What kind of tools do we need? Well, I have a pair of bent nose pliers here. I also have a pair of chain nose pliers. They have a similar tip, only straight. If you don't have the bent nose pliers, that's okay, but you'll need two pairs of the chain nose pliers. I also have a pair of round nose pliers. So these are round. These are like the tips are conical. And then I have a pair of flush cutters. So they're flat on the one side and not on the other. You get a nice flush cut with the wire with those. And last but not least, if you watched any of my other charm tutorials, I use this banana stand and you'll see what we do with that in the second part of this video. So for this first part what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do a loop and I actually prefer using wrapped loops. So I'll show you how to do one of those and then I'm going to speed up the video as I create the charm. Okay so I'm back and I'm going to show you guys how to do the loops. And I'm actually going to create just a small charm using this crystal. And this is actually a small bronze crimp bead, but I like using them just as a, just a metal bead. I'm going to use 20 gauge wire for this, and I typically do use 20 gauge. Uh, 22 gauge is a little bit finer, and it's a lot easier to use. So if you're just starting, I would suggest you use 22 gauge. However, it does bend a little bit more easily. For these charms, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off a piece of wire here. And let's see, I'll tell you guys how long this is. It's about four inches long, so. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wrap loop on the one end. So what I do is I just grab the wire with my bent nose pliers and I'm maybe an inch from the end 
and don't grab the tip of the wire, push it at a 90 degree angle right at the pliers. Like this. Okay. Now I take my round nose pliers and I decide what diameter loop I want. I usually, I don't know, go about there. And if you want consistent size loops, you can just take a sharpie marker and mark a line on your round, round nose pliers so that you're always grabbing the wire in the same place. After a while you tend to get a mark on the plier anyway. So I grab the wire kind of close to this bend in the wire and then like I did with the bent, bent nose pliers there I just wrap the wire around. I have to rotate my pliers so that it's at a 90 degree angle. Like this. Actually it's not quite 90 degrees but there we go. I then switch hands with my round nose pliers. I put it in my non-dominant hand. Grab my chain nose pliers, or sorry, bent nose pliers, and I start wrapping this the tip of the the end of the wire. Sorry guys, I'm having a hard time here. Around the stem. And you know what? If you don't do a perfect job, it's okay. It's easy to fix. It's wire. And this is a terrible loop for me, but anyways. So then you snip it off, snip the tip off, and you guys, a lot of times it's good to wear some protective glasses. Try to catch the bits of the wire because they can go flying. So then I just wrap the tip of that, the end of the wire, around there. And you can, I don't know if you can see, but I didn't get in very tight wraps. So I'm going to try to fix that. There we go. Of course you're on film and you make it look a lot harder than it is. So there's my wrap loop. So then all I do is I string my beads on. I'm going to put my crystal and my crimp bead. I gotta adjust the light, guys, so it's easier. Then grab the end of the wire, you can see right by the bead there. Push away from me so that the wire's at a 90 degree angle. And I'm just gonna do my wrap loop all over again. You can see four inches was way more wire than I needed for this tiny little bead. So I know some of you are cringing because of the amount of wire I'm going to be wasting, but I sometimes cringe myself. I just keep wrapping until you can see there's quite a bit of space left there. I'm just going to keep wrapping until I've almost filled that space. I'm going to cut the end off with my um, flush cutters and make sure the flat and flat side of the pliers is facing towards your charm. I'm just going to finish that off. There you go. And if these aren't straight, it's quite easy. Grab your round nose pliers, give it a twist. I always like the loops to be in the same plane, so I sometimes grab each of the loops and give it a twist. Looks nice and neat and like that. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in and start making a lot of these little charms and I'm going to speed up the video. Once I have my charms ready, we'll come back and I'll show you how to assemble it to make a really, really chunky charm.
Okay, so I think we have enough um, charms here made, especially when you take into account all the other um, charms that I have in this dish. Um, you can see at the last minute I pulled out a few leaf beads that I remember I had in my stash. I thought I would complement the flowers a little bit better. You notice that I didn't finish off the loop on the bottom of this. The reason being I'm trying to keep all the metal bronze. Now I don't necessarily do that for all my charms. I do mix metals, but this particular one, I don't know, I just prefer to do it bronze. So you see I've also got these other two charms, the corset and the little lady's boot. I'm also going to alcohol ink those. So once I'm done alcohol inking that and doing the loop here, we'll come back and I will show you what we're going to do to make these flowers a little bit more durable for your charm. Okay, so to alcohol ink these silver pieces, I'm going to use a combination of pitch black, espresso, ginger, and caramel. It's my favorite color combination, so I'll just speed the film up here. Hello, so I'm back, and this is my answer to making these paper flowers more durable. Here I've got some of the clear beauty in my melting pot. Seems to be a little bit too hot. I do have it on the UD setting, but kind of yellow sometimes. I'm not too worried about it. I like the shabby look anyway. And uh, I've got my tweezers here. Of course, you don't want to just grab the end and stick them in. But uh, that's exactly what we're going to do is grab, use the tweezers and going to dip these guys in the UD. I'm just going to let it sit at the top for a few minutes just to let the extra UD run out because otherwise it creates a dome and the individual petals aren't there's no texture left to it you know see it's just a round glob so looks like that's what it it's gonna end up turning out to be anyways oh my sometimes I've actually gotten the extra UD off just on the corner or on the edge of the pot. I think that works a little bit better. So what you end up with, I don't know, my camera's not focusing very well. Oops. Oh boy. So what you end up with is this cute little you need rose and it almost looks like porcelain. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of these. You guys don't need me to show you or I might just speed up the film here. I'll either speed up the film or cut this section out and come back when they're all you need. Okay so now I have all my little roses and ro rosebuds covered in nudie. My charms are inked. We've got the loop on this one. So we have everything all ready to make a chunky charm. So what I'm going to do, and I should note that I won't necessarily use everything that's in this tray. It just gives me a lot to draw off of. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera angle. I'm going to pull out my banana tree and this is where I use this is I hang my a swivel clasp from the hook there and then I can easily see what my charm is looking like rather than if I was just working on the desk so let me change the angle and you can watch me build this charm
I think I'm done. Um, you can see I've used all, almost all of the charms I had in here, actually. I've just got a few um, items left here. Not many. So I hope you like the charm. Um, if you're interested in learning more details about the types of tools, types of beads and stuff that I use, you can go over to my YouTube channel at Butterbee Scraps and I have a playlist there. There's a series I think of five different videos that goes into much more detail on creating this type of charm. So I hope you like the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, go check out the Wild Orchid Crafts channel. There's tons of new projects and different tutorials that the other design team members are putting up all the time. Have a great day. Bye.